Um, but today I'm going to talk about the third cohort and the process um, that we went through together. Our focus was on genetic pest management and agricultural pests, or insects specifically. And uh, before I talk about what we did, I'll tell you who we are. We had the largest cohort. We had seven people. And our backgrounds range from marine biology to counseling and a lot of things in between. We represented five different graduate programs across the college, and we came from all over uh, the US. So our trip was to Mexico, and Mexico was chosen because it has a really complex relationship with genetic engineering. For example, genetically engineered maize is not allowed to be planted in the country because Mexico is the center of origin and diversity for the species, and it's a very important cultural icon. However, the country does allow planting of genetically engineered soy and cotton. Um, however, insects are still eating the uh, landrace maize that is grown, and so we wondered, would a transgenic insect be acceptable in this culture? And while we haven't answered that question, we have learned a lot about the complexities that go into um, what we might want to know to answer that question. So the first week of our trip was actually spent here in Raleigh, learning the basics of what we would need to know to do the research down there. Um, one of the really uh, important moments of that week was learning how to do take anthropological field notes, which is a major component of the course, um, because it was an actual class that we got graded for. Um, and then we went down to Mexico City the first week and met up with three Mexican students who were all really excellent um, people and students. And in fact, Esteban is currently a grad student here at NC State on a Fulbright Fellowship. Um, and I think that he chose to come here because of the association we had uh, down there. And so that first week we spent meeting with a ton of different groups to just get a sense of how complex the issue of genetic engineering in Mexico is. Um, and then at the end of that week, we went to CIMIT, which is the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, and we really got to learn firsthand the amount of diversity that exists in maize in Mexico. Uh, and while we were there, we also attended a symposium on transgenics and society that Fred and Jason and a few other professors from here and researchers from CIMIT presented on. So at the end of that first week, we then uh, traveled to a rural area of Oaxaca State called Yanuitlan, and we spent uh, about two weeks there doing field visits to farms where we uh, collected insects, we interviewed farmers, we also went to a nearby market town and interviewed merchants, and we even collected some maize weevil, which is the most common storage pest of corn down there, and did some uh, food choice experiments. And we also got to enjoy some really rich cultural experiences while we were there, um, which I don't have time to go into, but please ask me later. Um, and at the end of that time, we compiled all of the data that we had collected into this report, which is in Spanish, and we presented it to the Ejido, which is the farming community, um, and about all of the insects we had found, which ones are good for them, which ones are pests, and we um, gave them an actual pinned insect collection and a dissecting microscope so that they could study the insects we had collected as a thank you for their hospitality and working with us um, and letting us come into their community. And then we came back, and Fred mentioned earlier that two years of funding are guaranteed for uh, students in the IGERT, but the third is a, based on a competitive process where you have to write a proposal. And so I teamed up with Mike Jones, who's in the cohort, uh, and we proposed to do a bioeconomic <laughs> landscape review of the importance of maize weevil in coastal and southern Mexico. And through this, we collaborated with two of the scientists we'd met on the original trip who actually live and work in Mexico. And they helped us find uh, new sites to visit in the states of Oaxaca and Chiapas. And we went down there, collected weevils, collected some economic survey data, and I won't tell you any more about it, but if I can change the slide. We have a poster, come see it later. <laughs> okay. So, but the main thing that we did as a group was our cohort project. And we got our inspiration from the uh, Roadmap to Gene Drives workshop that was hosted here by the GS Center in uh, February of 2016, 
And we had already, by this time, really been thinking about what to do for our cohort project. And we were batting around a few different ideas. But while we were helping with this uh, workshop, we were helping moderate the breakout groups and, and listening to all of the talks, we really identified that there was a lack of specific focus on agricultural pests. And at the end of the workshop, there was um, a request for submissions of papers to this special issue of the Journal of Responsible Innovation. So we said, you know what? Let's write a paper focusing on gene drives specifically, not just genetic pest management in agricultural pest. And so, okay, I don't know about that mouse. <laughs> um, we did that, and even though we had a semester-long class devoted to the production of this project, it of course took a lot longer, especially with the review and revision process. Um, but part of this long process not, was not just the writing, it was learning how to communicate with each other, but also learning how to communicate with the reader, because identifying a, interdisciplinary, a person who is going to read an interdisciplinary paper is actually very challenging. And so that took a lot of time, and we really wanted the paper to end up um, having one voice. We didn't want it to sound like, oh, okay, well, the geneticist wrote this section, and the economist wrote this section, and the social scientist wrote this section, and then they stapled it together and submitted it. We really wanted it to sound like one person had written it. And in the end, I think um, that we really did achieve a cohesive document, and I'd love if someone would read it. <laughs> um, but while we were waiting for that special issue to come out, another group uh, published an article called Agricultural Pest Control with CRISPR-Based Gene Drive, Time for Public Debate. Should we use gene drive for pest control? And we're like, oh, this is great. This is exactly what we're all about. But when we read it, there were some issues with the paper. Um, there were some factual issues. They had overlooked some key events that had happened. And so we decided that we were going to respond to this. Uh, in a timely manner, and we got together, and it was so much easier the second time working together. The first time, it took a long time to figure each other out, to learn how to talk to each other. The second time, we sat down around a table, we all had the Google Drive document open, and we were literally writing the whole paper together, sentence by sentence. And we, I, th I think we had like a two-week turnaround on this, and it was accepted with very minor revisions, and I think we produced a very respectful and accurate rebuttal to the errors that were in the original article. And the result was that in the reply from the original uh, authors, they, um, it was very re uh, positive response from them to us. And so I think we really found that there's a steep learning curve on doing interdisciplinary work, but once you achieve that, it gets a lot easier. However, I think oftentimes people give up after that first project because it's so hard and so time consuming. So if you can push through and continue, that's when you start to reap the results. Um, and so I'm just gonna close now with why I think the IGERT is valuable. And some of these are very obvious. I mean, we have access to the best researchers here on campus and through the workshops and symposia that the GES Center uh, sponsors. We were given rich international research experience. Um, every year we have guaranteed travel money to go to conferences to build our professional networks. And obviously the people and the collaborations are important. But the real reason the IGERT is valuable is because it prevents tunnel vision and it develops big picture thinking in its students. And it does this by granting the time and resources to learn the skill of interdisciplinarity. So it's not just something you can wake up and do one day. It's something that you have to learn how to do. And <laughs> the IGERT gave us the time to learn how to do that. Um, and uh, one of our cohort members participated in the industry immersion program that's here on campus last year. And the big takeaway that she got was that the IGERT has prepared us for everything that industry is looking forward to hire, because everyone knows how to do a PCR or whatever, and you can teach that to someone. But not everyone knows how to think and talk across disciplines. So, thank you. Thank you.